Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about polyton chromosome. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So this is the drawing of polyton chromosome. So polyton chromosome is also called giant chromosome. Now, why it is called giant chromosome? Because its size is huge. So first, let's see the morphology of this chromosome. So this chromosome is actually found in the salivary gland of Drosophila larva. Now we know that Drosophila melanogaster, that is the fruit fly, it has four pairs of chromosomes right four pairs of chromosome it has okay so you can see that this is the x chromosome this is large x chromosome now you can think that there are homologous chromosomes inside a cell so I am showing only one X chromosome. So where is the other one? The thing is that two X chromosomes are present here only that we can see. Two X chromosomes are found together in this way. So here we can see one X chromosome but it represents two X chromosomes obviously if it is the chromosome of female fly. Okay. So next is chromosome number 2. So you can see here this is chromosome number 2 and this is chromosome number 2. What does that mean? So this is chromosome number 2 right arm and this is chromosome number 2 left arm. So this is single chromosome only chromosome number two this is a single chromosome but you know that the centromere is sometimes found in the middle position of the chromosome so in that case it has two arms like that so it has right arm and left arm so two arms we can see in this chromosome two here also two homologous chromosomes are found together in this way and next is Chromosome number 3. So you can see chromosome number 3 left arm and chromosome number 3 right arm. Right? So here also uh, this chromosome number 3 contains two homologous chromosomes. So here you will get two chromosome number 3 together. Here you will get two chromosome number 2 together like that and this is chromosome number 4 this is very small this is actually smallest chromosome you can find here and here also two chromosome number 4 so two no homologous chromosomes are found together in this way and here you can see that the all four chromosomes are joined at a particular point. So this point is called chromocenter where the centromeres of all four chromosomes are fused. Now if it is the chromosome of male fly then where is the Y chromosome? So actually Y chromosome is very little and that Y chromosome will be fused with that chromocenter so you will not find that Y chromosome under microscope easily right now the thing is why it is so big so the answer is now we know that during the interphase of cell cycle specifically the S phase of cell cycle what happens actually chromosome duplication or DNA duplication takes place in this S phase that we all know. Now after the S phase each chromosome becomes two chromatids right. 
So two sister chromatids are formed from each chromosome after S phase. But in this case, there is a problem. The cell division is not complete in this case, but the DNA duplication occurs continuously. Like 10 rounds of DNA duplication occurs for every chromosome. So after 10 rounds of DNA duplication, 2 to the power n, that means 1024 sister chromatids will be generated from every chromosome. And those 1024 sister chromatids will remain together side by side. So this is the case. That's why each chromosome contains 1024 sister chromatids. That is huge, right? And because of that, the chromosome looks huge under microscope. Now let's see the notes. Okay. So, polygen chromosomes are giant chromosomes with several DNA strands. That means we can say sister chromatids. placed side by side and how many sister chromatids 1024 for each chromosome and the polygen chromosome is found in salivary glands of drosophila larva and it is discovered by eg balbiani in 1881 okay so let's see its features polygen chromosomes are visible during interface of mitosis under compound microscope. So they are many times larger than normal chromosomes. That's why they are called giant chromosomes. So the large size of these chromosomes results from 10 rounds of DNA replication without mitotic cell division that I have already explained. Thus, after 10 rounds of replication, each chromosome yields 1024 sister chromatids which stay lined up side by side. Hence, they are called polytene chromosomes that means many threaded. And this type of division is called endoreplication. So, four chromosomes each with 1024 sister chromatids are held together at their centromeres. This fused centromere is known as the chromocenter. So there are six arms in each polytene chromosome. Among them, the left and right arms of chromosomes 2 and 3 and the single arm of the X chromosome are larger in size that we have already seen. And fourth chromosome is the smallest. Y chromosome is fused with chromocenter in male and is not seen as a separate strand. Since nucleus of drosophila is deployed, each pair of homologous chromosomes align along their lengths in each arm. Okay, so let's see here one thing. If we think about each arm or each chromosome like we have here X chromosome. So it has 1024 strands of one chromosome and the other chromosome that means the other homologous chromosome also has 1024 strands. So total 2048 strands DNA strands are found in this X chromosome, right? In this case also, the same thing will happen. You will get 2048 DNA strands or sister chromatids. Here also, you will get 2048 strands. 
even in the smallest chromosome also you will get 2048 strands so this is the case now see the bending pattern so this dark red color represents band and this light pink color represents interband now the thing is that this band and interband both contain genes but definitely the interband contains more genes compared to bands but why the band contains less genes the thing is if you stay in this polytin chromosome the bands will take more stain and will look darker and the interband will take little stain and will look lighter because the band contains heterochromatin that is very much coiled dna very much thicker dna and it contains few genes but interband has euchromatin and the dna is lightly coiled here dna is thinner here and it contains more genes now if i zoom one chromosome arm like this so we can find a puff like structure like this this is called chromosome puff what is this actually the dark band contains few genes but those few genes also need to be transcribed right now the dark band contains very coiled dna so first before transcription that very much coiled dna needs to be uncoiled or needs to be unfolded and during that unfolding phase the chromosome will swell like this and this is called chromosome puff so chromosome puff you will get only in the dark band because light bands already contains euchromatin so light bands already have less coiled dna now let's see the notes okay so the genes along the chromosomes form a characteristic banding pattern it shows alternating bands and interbands bands are darkly stained and interbands are lightly stained what we have already seen the dark bands represent heterochromatin which have few genes while light bands represent euchromatin which have more genes about 85% of dna and less rna is located in bands and 15% of dna and more rna is located in interbands that means only 15% of dna is genetically active so 15% of dna contains huge number of genes but that 85% of dna contains few genes and the bands of polytin chromosomes swell at certain sites called puffs or balbiani rings after the name of the scientist who discovered the puffing is caused by the uncoiling of dna in a band the puffs indicate the site of active genes where mrna synthesis takes place okay now let's talk about the function of polytin chromosome polytin chromosome carries genes which ultimately control physiology of the organism and it increases the volume of cells nucleus because its size is huge and because of that the nucleus size is also bigger compared to the normal one and it causes cell expansion and this dna amplification is actually important because the dna amplification increases the gene copy number and this allows the larva to produce large quantities of gene products 
because many genes means many proteins and this is required for the rapid growth of larva as it progresses from the first to third insta stages of the development it requires for its development since the bands can be recognized by their different thicknesses and spacings each one has been given a number to generate a polyton chromosome map that is also very much important if you want to study drosophila genetics or if you want to study drosophila genes or drosophila dna structure because these bands are not uniform this has one particular thickness this has one particular thickness this has one particular thickness and the space between two bands like this is the interband right so this interband space is also not very much uniform it can be larger it can be smaller so it varies and you can number these bands like 1 2 3 and in this way you can make a very useful chromosome map so this is all about today's lecture i hope you enjoyed the lecture thank you